going on team? Welcome to Live from Crate Kitchen in Chicago. On behalf of Breville, I'm your host, Chef Dan Churchill and Legends. It's a pleasure to always cook with you. Getting to do it live is even more awesome. So as you may know, we're here to cook an awesome apple bundt cake. Before we get into that, I just wanna say hi. As always, stoked to be your chef in any situation. And we've got some housekeeping, so I hope you're ready for some fun and games. I want to see, making sure you guys are putting, I've got like an awesome setup around me. I've got multiple cameras. I've got like one that's like up here. I've got one that's in here. And I wanna make sure I can see all your faces. So make sure you turn on your screen, if you feel obliged, because I'd love to engage you tonight. We're gonna have some prizes, especially one day special one over here to give away to. So step one, turn on your cameras. Step two, if you do have a question, do not be afraid to engage. We have myself and also a Breville specialist in Karen who's here to answer any of your, you know, super special questions you may have coming our way. Karen, are you there with me right now just to say hello? You're on? Awesome, mate. Look, I'm excited to, I'm sorry, there she is. How you doing? How's it going? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. Ready to cook and uh, make, you know, I love baking. Don't get to do it all the time, but love to bake. And I know you're our specialist for particularly our Breville Dual Smart Oven tonight. So I know a lot of people are going to be asking some questions. So if, you know, I'll make sure I'll be directing all the very hard ones your way. All right? Everyone just ask away any product questions, how to do this, how to clean that. Go ahead, throw them at me. Any recipe questions or just want to have a good time, throw them on Dan, so. You got it. In, wow. in fact, actually, if there's anyone who wants to uh, be the very first to ask a question, if you like the amazing Breville apron I'm currently modeling for you tonight, you guys, the first person to raise your hand and ask the question is going to be given one of these. So, who's going to be the first to jump in? Who's going to be the first one to jump in? They're pretty good. They work well with black. They're a neutral color, so white as well. Oh, we've got someone. We've got someone. Who's the first one? <gasps> Who do we have? Hi. Victoria, how you doing? Can you hear me, can you hear me Victoria? How are you things? doing? I do have a question. <clears throat> I was looking over the recipe, and it says to use the can of coconut milk, but I don't know if you want the liquidy part or the fatty thicker part. Oh, I love it. That's such a great question because there's obviously technique to using both either the liquid part or the thick creamy part. In fact, it's what makes a curry or another special use of the coconut milk so special, Victoria. But tonight, I would definitely urge on using more of the cream first and then as it thickens, adding in some of the liquid. If you've shaken up your can already, totally fine but definitely a secret is to when you're using it your cans of coconut milk try to keep them stable so you're not you know dividing up and making sure they blend so it's a great question so tonight we'll definitely stick towards our thick coconut uh, milk and then obviously adding in the liquid base and because you asked the first question raised your hand we're going to send you one of these awesome breville uh aprons so can't wait to you know definitely get one your way mate so i'm looking forward to cooking with you tonight uh and as is karen and so as I said, guys, just like Victoria just did, she spoke out and we'd love to have you guys engage in tonight's awesome you know, show. So if you haven't uh, seen the recipes as well, we've got all the ingredients which we can flick between as well if you have any questions. I think baking, as much as people make out to be is one of the hardest things, it's actually quite simple because a lot of the time you're doing a wet versus dry mixture, which is what we're doing tonight. And then you're finishing off with the sauce and we'll show you something a little bit extra special tonight as well. Quick little... Uh, you know, we've got some people already uh, you tuned in. We've got Sarah from Maryland. We've got Andrew from Houston. Carmela from Gainesville. Nice, love that. John, LA, love your work. There we all are. What's going on, everybody? Cheryl, Colorado. Kathy from Wisconsin. Oh, go the Green Bay Packers. I don't usually say that too often, but uh, it's a good one as well. But um, everyone, welcome. And I hope you're all excited. Kate, looks like you're ready to cook too. I can see you in the kitchen. It's exciting. Oh, there's Liz. Liz, you're a good friend of mine from New York. Good to see you, mate. Yeah, nice. Good to see you. A couple of thumbs up. So, team. Oh, there's Chris too. G'day, Chris. Good to see you, mate. Hope the kids are well. Shouting out. All right, team. So, 
I want to start off by saying you are going to preheat your oven and team, this is the oven we are going to be giving away to one lucky individual tonight. So before we get started in cooking our recipe, let's make sure we preheat our, oven, preheat our ovens. We're going to go to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I will say why I do love this awesome device here is it's a very simple thing to do. For me, I press start, all right, and then I go down to the bake sequence, which is right here, adjusting on the first dial. I've got my temperature adjustment right here, which I'm just gonna dial up to very simply. And then all I have to do is press start. And because it preheats super quickly, if I'm in a hurry and still wanna bake something or roast something like I typically do after coming home late from you know, chefing duties, it's gonna be ready very quickly. So if you have uh, not got the Breville Dual Smart Oven, go ahead, pre your oven to that 350 dial and uh, we'll get you underway ready to cook off your tin. Now, we are doing a bunt cake tonight, so I know a lot of people have asked, well, I don't have a bunt cake tin. It's totally fine to use a typical uh, circular tin or even a square one as well. You know, it tastes just the same in a way. You may get a different texture on the outside depending on the shape. But that being said, it is time to get cooking. So, I know the recipe did call for apples chopped, but I like chopping things and teaching you guys stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually chop up our apples. All right, so we've got an assortment of apples here. I've got myself some beautiful Lake Gala right here. Now, I will say, we're gonna dice these. The smaller you make the chop, the more flavor there is, but the less texture you'll get. So you're gonna balance it out depending on what you want. I want a nice small dice. So a small dice is typically around the size of your thumb now. Cool? So team, one of the best ways to learn how to chop, I've always used my man, Jim Carrey, when he was referring to in Liar Liar, the claw. You may have seen me reference this all the time, but it's a great way to remind yourself never to cut your thumb off by hiding it behind your fingers and then having your knuckle. And I forget my, t my camera team is to zoom in even tighter on my knuckle for me. I'll give you guys a bit more of a close up look as we head down to our apple. So if we head down here, you can see my knuckle is the most outer part of my uh, I guess my hand, right? And my actual knife is up against the blade. So no matter what, it's never gonna go past that. So anything behind that, in this case, all my other fingers, is never gonna get cut. So, also working base of support of your apple, and this goes the same for any veggie. When you're working with this kind of stuff, you wanna make sure you get a nice, stable base of support. This is kind of rolling around freely, all right? It's like a soccer ball into the World Cup. If we get it nice and flat like this, at least it has some sort of base to support to protect us. So I'm just going to do my first slice using that knuckle as my guide. And now because of this, as you can see, this guy still rolling about. This one nice and flat. I've got something to work with. So that's just a way to learn how to chop up your veggies. And if you've already gone and, and done this, love your work. If you're just kind of, you know, watching me go about this and do it yourself, you now have a new technique to learn. And I wonder, Karen, how's your chopping abilities, mate? Have you got some decent uh, knife work down there? He said, it takes a lot of practice to keep your fingers rolled like that. But, it is, you know, it is. <laughs> it's also interesting because, like, I would say most people don't, you know, typically have your elbows sticking out so weird. And, uh, you know, when I was starting out as a chef and first learning that, I look, you look, you know, interesting to yourself and weird. But trust me, it's one of those basic things that once you pick up, it becomes very natural. And I will say that I do still cut every now and then, if anything, if I'm going to cut something, I cut the top of my finger here, like I just scrape it, right? I never cut anything off and trust me, the amount of chopping I still do, it's, uh, it's quite amazing how much I get away with. So once you get this going though guys, and if you've already done that, you're just listening in, we're gonna just get into our uh, wet mixture. So we're gonna get into a second, I'm gonna give away a second amazing apron because I wanna see the best one-handed egg cracking from our guests tonight. So if you guys have not seen me do this on my socials, I typically have a challenge to all my guests who come into my studio kitchen. And what we do is we mark their score out of 10 of how well they can crack an egg one-handed. My team and I have a fantastic time judging this and we judge it on a couple of criteria. You have obviously the first part, which is the cleanliness of the crack, and what we call the dive, which is actually dropping the yolk in and how well it turns out. So is it a clean or is it scrambled up already? So from all that, we're about to judge one of you and you know, one, one, one lucky individual is going to come away with it once they show us their bowl. So get yourself ready, get your eggs cracking because I'm going to show you the correct technique here in just a second. All right, so 
Here we go. So you're gonna follow my lead, and then as we do that, I want you guys to raise your hand when you're showing me your egg cracking abilities. So here's how you do it. Grab yourself an egg, okay? You're gonna first and foremost grip it with your fingers over the top like this. Your thumb is behind, and you're providing a nice clean section to crack on. I know it sounds very obvious, but once we do our first clean crack, I'm then gonna just simply hinge and bring my thumb away from my, my index finger and my middle finger. So here we go, three, two, one. Nice clean crack, separate. And here we go, we're away. It's nice and clean, nothing. Oh, no, we do have some shell in there. So this is the next part I wanna teach you guys. So, question. Do we have someone ready for this? Because I wanna know what is the best way to get shell out of your bowl. Anyone, raise your hand for me. Oh, Chris, straight up, my man. What's the best way to get, first and foremost, mate, good to see you. Secondly, what's the best way to get shell out of an egg? And also, I want to see your one-headed egg cracking abilities, mate. So go ahead. Oh, he's got to put so, himself off mute. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, what's up, bud? Um, so maybe just tilting the bowl and using, like, your finger, maybe? No, you you're actually... Thing. You're close, so you tilt the bulb, you're gonna use your shell, right? You're gonna use your shell. But whilst we're on camera, I wanna see that one headed egg crack. Let's go, what do you got for me? Let's go for it. All right, let's go. No <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> well, first and foremost, no shell. No shell for sure, and it was scrambled, but you know, I'd give that what we call probably a good seven out of 10. But because you're my dude and you came up first, man, we're gonna send you out an apron anyway, how's that? <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Good to see you, bro. Good to see you. Does anyone else Thank want to you. show us their uh, egg cracking abilities whilst I get my second one done? Anyone else want to raise their hand? Who's game? We got someone? We all too shy. We saw Chris's and was like, that was too good. As I dive deep into my shell making abilities right here. We got someone? All right, we're just gonna proceed. I'm gonna crush getting these shells out. Bang. Okay, so once you've cracked three eggs in team, you're gonna whisk them up, and you're gonna look for... Oh yeah, oh my friends. All right, Eric, you coming on screen, dude? Mish, is, the team, is this team hall? There they are. Hey. What's up, what's up, crew? Are you guys in Buffalo tonight? Where are you at? Buffalo, you know it. You know it, dude. Oh, yeah. Hello. Those bills, those bills are looking pretty good this time of year, man. It's gonna be, it's gonna be that season, right? It's good. This is the one. This is the one. <laughs> well, speaking of the one, Michelle, let's give it a crack, mate. What do you got for me? All right, we'll try it. And I knew the shell thing. I just didn't get my hand raised in time. Yeah, you're right, mate. You're right. Let's go. Here you go. Nice. No, we... no shell. No shell. <laughs> Eric, is there any, Eric, is that nice and clean, mate? What do we got? That is unbelievable. Look at it. Well, that's a 10 out of 10 right there. You, you guys just got yourself an apron as well. Well done, guys. Well yes. done. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the final cake result from both of you. And uh, just letting you guys know, Eric and Michelle are amazing individuals, you know, paving the way and setting an example when it comes to the health and wellness space. So uh, always shouting out people who are legendary and inspiring. So yes, thanks guys. Thank you. And looking forward to seeing the resulting baked cake. All right. So make sure you, I know you will, but just tag us and we'll, we'll repost it a bit later. All right. Oh, of course. Love your work guys. All right. So once you get your first two done team, let's get our third one in. All right. And we're going to start whisking. As I said before, we're going to look for our ribbon consistency. All right. So if we go to our, that's it. We go to our top down. You can do a couple ways of whisking, a little bit of technique here. You can do your, your natural circle, all right? You can go counterclockwise, clockwise, whatever you feel natural. There is another one that we use in, the, uh, in I guess, in, in the industry. It's called the figure of eight. You're effectively moving back and forward, and this covers technically more surface area. So it is, it is something you're not used to, because typically when you look at a bowl and you see a circle, you're just so used to doing this. But the figure of eight is actually quicker, Stat statistically. Anyway, what we're looking for, team, as we cut back to the front camera for me, I'm going to show you the exact one we're looking for. All right, so we're going to pull this up, and as we pull it up, does it flow nice and easily? Does it come off, or is it clumpy? Once it comes nice and smoothly like that, she's ready to go. So, 
with one hand, we're going to add in our uh, oil, and the other hand, we're going to add in our, uh, well, we're going to whisk. So, for example, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to whisk with my right, and I'm going to get my olive oil ready. But in fact, just in case you've got a bit of a slippery surface, you can always get yourself a towel of some sort, create a little circle with it, and then just put it down on your surface, and that's going to be your, you know, your safeguard right there. So, here we go. You're going to add one in. Here we go, just like this. Gradually adding in your oil is a great way to create volume and you're adding in more fat to something, which is a great way to you know, increase that bake, you know, essentially the rise in it, which we'll use in a second. So once you add in the ingredient of the entire oil, it should become a nice little glossy shine. We're then going to add in our maple syrup, doing exactly the same thing, gradually adding it in. All right. And it will start to change colour, turn like a nice little amber colour. You typically note with baking, and with me, I don't use refined sugar that much at all, in fact. So it's rare for me to do that. What I like to do is actually use maple syrup or honey, or even sometimes and very rarely agave. But I love to definitely note what previously would have been done. So typically you have, uh, you have your butter and your sugar, and you cream that. That's typically the start of your baking process. In this case, we've got our fat. Instead of having butter, we have extra virgin olive oil, and our sugar is actually maple syrup. So same concept of macronutrient, does the same thing. We're just using a cleaner ingredient to do so. All right, so this is our wet for now. We're going to finish off more wet in a second when we add in our milk. We're going to turn to our flour. All right, so this is our dry. So we've got our dry ingredient here, we've got our wet ingredient here. We're starting to got A and B, having it go. In here, we're gonna add in our salt, our cinnamon, and our baking powder. Now, if you wanna change up the seasons, add in some spice, maybe some cardamom, some other things like that, totally able to do so. So in goes our salt, oh, wait, this is salt bay time. Can I get everyone on screen again? Is this possible? I need to see some salt bays. Get me off screen, you don't need this. There we go, all right. I'm going to start calling out names, and if I don't see some salt bays, I'm not going to be angry. I'm just going to be disappointed, and you know that hurts so much more. So whether you're looking at the computer or you're cooking, I want to see at least some sort of flex. Steph, you look very comfy on that couch. I want to see some flexing. All right? There we go. Can I get a, can I get a photo of this? All right, this is going to be a great one for later. So can I get uh, the team here behind me to make sure we take a nice little screenshot? Because we're going in five seconds. Four, three, two... One, everyone smile. I love that, that is awesome. Cheryl, your lighting is perfect by the way, mate. That is beautiful, I can see a nice beautiful face. <laughs> a couple of thumbs up as well, <laughs> love it. So we've got our salt going away team, so just a nice little pinch of salt in there. We're gonna add in our cinnamon, so bam, that goes in. Yesterday during rehearsal we did that, it went everywhere, which was awesome because I looked like LeBron James before one of his basketball games. Might do that again right now, see if it works. All right, let's get a little three, two, one. Oh. That's what we call fun and games in the kitchen right there. So <laughs> we've got, as I said, a couple of ingredients in here. We're now just gonna bring this together. So to do that, I'm just gonna use my spatula here. All dry ingredients. Once this is mixed, and you generally know that by the, the sight of your cinnamon, really just kind of tanning its way in. I like that, tanning, that's a good one, we keep that. What do you think of that one? Ali, thoughts on tanning its way in? Big fan, thumbs up? Nice, cheers, appreciate it. All right, so from there, we're gonna create a little well in the center. This is gonna allow you, when you're doing some baking, guys, if you just dumped the wet on top, it's gonna make it harder for you to mix in. By creating a well, you actually allow the liquid to penetrate down the bottom, and then you can fold the rest on top, which is what we're gonna about to do right now. So, we've got our goodies in. All right, and so from here, what I'm gonna do is just create that well, and I'm gonna use my whisk to gradually add it in, just like before. Three, two, one, here we go. Little whisk, little bit of movement. There we go, start with that one. And you can do it in a couple ways. You can actually do it in parts of three, or if you're steady with your hand, you can just gradually add it in. If you're like Eric and Michelle, where you're working in partnership, you know, one person can be whisking, the other person can be adding in a liquid base, and yeah, it's a good little team effort. Just like that. So if your mixes come together and you're like, well, it's a little bit thick, don't worry. We've got some milk in a second for you to work with. All right, we've got a few more things to come together for it as well. You've also got your vanilla extract. We're going to add that to the, to the game in a second. But just for now, we're just going to mix this together. I've got a question, do I? Could you add more cinnamon if you wanted to? Asking for a friend, Sarah. Well, Sarah, you can tell your friend, 
Absolutely. I'm personally a big fan of cinnamon. Um, just like garlic, whenever a recipe calls for like, so one teaspoon of something like cinnamon, I at least double it, right? It's a great one. So big fan of that one, mate. Thanks for sending that question through as well. And Sarah, say hello to your friend for me. So we've got here our mix nice and thick. It's essentially sticking to my whisk and we're like, oh no, it's too thick. All I need you to do is get the rest of your batter off and I'll show you why you're able to become an intuitive baker, intuitive cook, because when it comes to mixing wet and dry, you're looking for a particular, absolute particular consistency. So here we go, I'll show you in a sec. So first off, we're gonna add in our vanilla extract. Bam, just like that. Then you're gonna grab your milk and you're just gonna gradually add this in as well. And what I love about this is I don't like measurements. And it's really funny, any book I do, any you know, show I do, anything like this, even where the team at Breva were like, can you send us the recipe? The hardest part is for me to actually put that together because I'm very intuitive when I cook. So when I look at something, I'm like, oh, when it's done, oh, that looks right. So hopefully over time, as you guys learn to cook more and do some more baking, you get that same ability to be intuitive because that will allow you to go to the you know, supermarket, pick things up and just know with intuition what you should be you know, measuring stuff with. But for, the, for now, we're gonna work with measurements just to get you going and I'll show you the consistency we're looking for. By the way, your, your oven should be relatively preheated right now so you're almost ready to put your goodies into your respective tins. We got another question. All right, here we go. Kathy K. Instead of cinnamon, would cardamom be a substitute? Oh, you don't like cinnamon? I love your work though, because you already came up with your own solution. I love cardamom. There's also allspice, uh, and there's even some things without cinnamon that you can use as well. Like if you can, I've, I've got again no rules when it comes to recipes. So absolutely, mate, you can use cardamom. You can even use nutmeg if you prefer that over cinnamon. So go ahead up to you. Remember, you're the one enjoying this recipe, you're going to be the one to, in, to actually like it. So, very curious. I've never heard of someone who didn't like cinnamon. Not that uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but definitely, Kathy, my first ever doing that one for sure. Okay, so we're getting close here, team. Look at that. Falls. Oh, didn't we yesterday, is this, do we have the music for this? Is this still available? Do we make sure we could do this? Is this possible? So, this is a backstory, team. We were doing rehearsal yesterday. I saw how lovely this looked like coming off to the point that it reminded me of a nice little romantic music opportunity. So I was just like, should we get our music ready for when we actually uh, pour this in? So that is what I'm looking for, all right? So when you're adding in your milk, you are looking for an easy fall off, comes off with gravity, but falls with style and grace. Isn't like, how's it go in, uh, she's, no, really? You want me to sing it? I mean, I have been, if you guys have been checking my stories, I have been having a bit of fun dancing and singing. I did do karaoke last Saturday. I will say, I've got my voice ready to go. Just saying. So, we're going to fold in, <laughs> more on that later. I'm going to fold in our apples. So, just grab your apples, team. Pop them in the bowl. You know, make sure you're testing your apples. I've got to check these out. You know, it's all important to quality check. Have they got texture? Banging. These Chicago apples. Where'd you get these from? These are great. Oh. Yummy. Should, oh, another question. Should the milk and eggs be at room temperature? Kathy K, you hit me with the good ones. In an ideal world, yes, your ingredients of eggs and milk are actually at room temperature because that allows to increase in volume in size in the oven. It also helps with the whisking. If it's too cold, they kind of stay sheltered. But with the room temperature, they allow it to actually increase in size. Great question, Kathy K. Sherry, can you use other fruits like pears? Absolutely. Um, Sherry, my mom always told me never to chew and talk at the same time, so just me. Ah, good, awesome. Sorry, mom. Apologies if you're watching. So, apples and pears, same sort of layout. They've got a beautiful, fibrous skin, fantastic for dietary fibre. Love our work with that. They've got a beautiful inside, full of tasty juiciness. So, if you want the same concept of texture with a similar flavour, yes, pears are also a great substitute. In fact, you can actually take this principle of fruit in this mixture and apply it to your, your bunt or your cake. So the idea behind this recipe is hopefully you pick up more about the wet and the dry and then you can fold in whatever seasonal fruit you have around you. So if, say you go to the supermarket and you don't have apples for some weird reason, uh, but you have bananas or you have berries, just fold those in instead, it's still a delicious cake. So in goes that, I'm gonna grab my spat and I'm gonna fold things through. 
All right, I'm going to fold it all the way through. Has everyone seen that episode of, is it, um, I can't remember what it is. What's it called? Is it Schitt's Creek? It is, right? And they're like, fold it? And they're like, fold it. And they're like, fold it? And they're like, fold it. I hope people are laughing at home because I'd be making a big fool myself, which is not uncommon anyway, but hey, got to have a laugh. Got to have a laugh. All right, so we've got it nice and folded through. We haven't lost any extra air by, you know, mixing too hard. When you're folding, it's all about that gentle motion. It's all about the gentle motion. So from there, we're going to grab ourselves our Bunce cake tin. Now, I've, prior to moving to America, I had never come across one of these. I think Bunce cakes are definitely more North American than they are from the southern parts of the world, such as Australia. And if that's incorrect, my mum and dad just never cook buns, you know, so it's just <laughs> facts on that one. So you're just going to grease this. So grab yourself, if you've got a spray, if you've got just more olive oil, whatever you need, just get, make sure you get in every nook and cranny. Love that. Cool. Looks pretty shiny, right? It's ready to get a tan in the oven. Bingo. All right, and from there, we're just going to simply pour our goodies in and we're going to move on to our sauce. All right, so if you get a nice little, is, this, is it going to happen? Am I just uh, I'm imagining things? Am I have to, L is for the way. <laughs> oh, that's just gorgeous. Look at that. So one hand on the edge, just gradually pouring your goodies in like that, really making sure, if you, and obviously with a bunt tin, you generally you just point to one side and you can shake it out in a second, but you can see everything going in nice and smoothly. If, if it's not coming out like this, just make sure you add a little bit more milk, all right? You want it to be a pretty relative ease when it com comes out like this. Also, I'm just gonna put it out there. If anyone's asking you to bring a cake round for Christmas or holiday season this year, I've already got you covered. This should be top of mind. It is wet versus dry with whatever fruit you have into a tin, cooked with our team with Breville here at the Crate Kitchen. It's a good time. What's not to love? So with that being said, give it a nice little gentle tap. So you can see here, we're trying to remove all the air bubbles. All right, get a little shake, even it up a little bit and bang. So here's one of my favorite parts about the oven that we're about to show you with. All right. So get everything nice and set. Just check it out. Some, I told you about the awesome preheat. I told you about the easy settings. Check out what happens when I remove this awesome oven door. Ready? What? Wait, wait, wait I didn't get a good look at that. I got to see that again. I got to see that again. Ready? Three, two, Oh my God, the tray comes out automatically. We've got two awesome magnets here on the edge of the door, which makes it really easy because a lot of times we, have, we really struggle to actually get the oven door, you know, well not open, but the, the trays themselves to actually fit properly. So we've also got what is an awesome air fryer rack right here. And with the popularity of air frying going hotter than TikTok right now, well, you know, that's just something to think about when it comes to creating your own goodies. In fact, I've become this man who loves sweet potato fries, like legitimately, I'll, I still chop up my sweet potatoes, but if I'm in a big rush, I go to the, the frozen section, grab my sweet potatoes or root vegetables, and just whack them in my, uh, you know, my Breville Jewel Smart Oven for air fry, game over. Amazing sweet potato fry chips, it's great. So, I put my rack on the bottom shelf, because what I'm gonna do now is a bunt cake is gonna go in here, and you'll notice, that it's still in the relative center, all right? It also gives you some height to work with as well. So that's now in there. Uh, if you didn't realize, that's actually a relatively big bunt cake tin. I've cooked a, an actual uh, turkey inside one of these bad boys. So if you're wondering how big these are, they're small but powerful. And when I say small, they're relatively small for your typical oven, but they're massive in what they can actually handle because as I said, I've cooked a whole turkey for about eight people in one of these bad boys. It was a wonderful experience. So. Now that we've got this going on, uh, mom, can you stop calling me, please? I know, yes, sorry, she's actually calling me. True story. Um, she always calls the most appropriate times, love her. Okay, Philip, what do we got? What kind of oil was that sprayed in there? Oh, Phil, my man, it is, uh, it's actually extra virgin olive oil, massive fan of it. If you get the good quality ones as well, you will definitely avoid what people say is why you should not cook with high heat with extra virgin olive oil. So you can also use something that's like a typical olive oil or butter, coconut oil, I would definitely try to avoid using canola and those things like that, just typically because they have what's called seed oils, 
Uh, you know, they've got high omega-6 fatty acids, which is something we're trying to avoid when it comes to our health. So as I say that, we're gonna move over to our butterscotch sauce. Now our butterscotch sauce team is typically, we talked about this earlier, we had sugar, we had butter, all right? You typically start with those two things, you caramelize your sugar with your butter, and then you add in your thickened cream all right, off the heat. We're gonna take that same formula. We're gonna use a sugar in maple syrup, our fat in olive oil, and we add in our coconut milk all right, at the end instead of you know whipped cream. So it's gonna be an amazing experience. And this is something that I definitely, definitely recommend you guys keeping in a jar at home. So make a lot of it, because on those pancakes, on any form of sauce, any form of desired goodies that you love baking with, they're fantastic for it. Jenny, no flour in the pan. Oh, great question. No, you don't have to. You can, you can, you can actually use maple or even some sort of sugar to the outside, which is totally fine. Um, but we didn't do that. If you prefer to flour for you know, greasing reasons or as you get that extra crust, go ahead. Because I use the extra virgin olive oil, I don't need to. So keeping a board on top is okay. Yes, Cheryl, great question. So Cheryl's asking, is it okay to keep a chopping board on top? And that's one of the wonderful things about this oven. Yes, you can. It makes things both practical, but also it's a great place to store it and keep things on top as well when you're resting. So I love it up there as well myself. All right, so let's move over to our butterscotch. So we're gonna go medium heat pan here. And all we're gonna do is, as I said earlier, we've got our olive oil. I'm just gonna slather it over. How's my camera team? Give me the thumbs up, we're looking good. Love your work, Tyler. Shout out to Tyler and the team here. All right, so in goes our olive oil, medium heat. And with that, we're gonna add in our sugar, in this case, our maple syrup. Bring that in. How you doing? Bang. And now all we're gonna do is just wait for that to start to caramelize. So you'll start to see bubbles. You'll start to see some excitement. It'll start to turn even more of a darker color. At which point, we're gonna take off the heat and add in our coconut. And uh, it's gonna be that point where you try and just get the coconut milk, which is the non-thickened up part. <laughs> Love our work. So, just to recap so far team, what we've done is we've shown you how to chop vegetables, fruit, just to avoid chopping off your thumb and even any form of your fingers. We've combined our dry ingredients, which were our flour, our cinnamon, our baking powder, a pinch of salt, with our wet ingredients where you guys know now how to crush cracking an egg one-handed, maple syrup, olive oil, vanilla extract, and milk, all in one thing, put in the tin, whether it be a, a bundt cake tin or a flour, uh, so, or a typical circular square tin, whatever you need, and then now it's time to make a sauce. Pretty simple, uh, yet so delicious, and we've used no refined sugar. It's gonna make for an awesome, clean, tasty holiday. I'll say that. Shannon, thanks Shannon. What would be the best substitute for the coconut milk? So, there's a couple options here. Coconut milk is usually, you know, something that's a dairy-free option. So you can typically still use dairy if you want. You can obviously go the full cream or even the thickened cream route. You can even go, I would actually recommend the barista oat options when it comes to your supermarket. You can pick up barista oat um, blends from the supermarket. And why I recommend that is they've got a little bit more thickening agent in them, like xanthan gum, and that will still allow you to have this thickened sauce. So if you want to stay dairy free, I would go that route. If you're okay wearing using dairy, you got your full cream route as well. And if you want to step into it, you can definitely use thickened cream. So uh, as I say that, we've got some bubbly party action still happening over here in the Craig Kitchen in this saucepan. I'm going to let this chill for about 15 seconds, maybe 20, at which point we'll then add in our cream. All right, I'm just going to test this one thing we're going over here too. Hang on a second. Bingo, lovely. So one thing I did earlier team, this is pretty cool. So you got here, we got a top down shot. You guys may have seen my one ingredient sauce that I often do. So you got here simply raspberries, water, and a touch of maple syrup. That's just sitting on the stove top. Love your work. It's what, it's what you do. Cool, as this is bubbling away, I'm gonna do a little apple eating, cause I can. I'm not sure I'll clean down. Sorry, mum, I'm chewing again. What other questions do we have coming in? Oh, if you have a question, yes, yeah, sorry, I forgot to respond. If you do have a question, do not be afraid to raise your hand, all right? You can have questions on the dual smart oven. So that's straight for Karen. So do we have any questions for Karen, by the way? She's just chilling there. She's like, everyone, Dan's doing such a great job talking about the oven that I don't need to do my work. I'm like, oh, sick. So have a look at this. I'm gonna bring this over. This is what you're looking for. How's my, did I nail that? Oh, bang on the money. So see it's bubbling away. Let that bubble for a little bit longer. 
All right, and then we're going to add in our, our, our milk, our coconut milk, and a salt, and we're going to have a salty, sweet butterscotch sauce. So, oh, question. John, what is your recommendation if you want to booze up the sauce like a rum cake, rum, brandy, bourbon? John, my man, love where your head's at. So, I would definitely recommend doing it here at this uh, sauce creating stage. Reason being is, you're gonna get more of the flavor that you're actually looking for by doing the sauce. It's gonna get lost in the actual cake itself. Uh, you can soak, what's great is you can create this sauce, soak your cake in the actual brandy sauce first, like you can make like a syrup. So you can simply just do, instead of doing a butterscotch, do your, do your, oil, do your fat, do your sugar, and then add in some brandy or bourbon. And then what you can do is pour it over the top, and it'll soak in it, and then after that, when you go to actually set the table, you can have this sauce over the top when everyone's there drizzling with it. It's pretty awesome. So um, alternatively, you can just simply make a butterscotch bourbon sauce or you know brandy, which is delicious as well. You'll just add in the brandy at just just uh, you'll turn you essentially take the coconut milk off the heat in. So you take your pot away, add the coconut milk so it doesn't burn. Then when you put it back on, you add in your your brandy so it cooks off the rest of the alcohol, and you can still have you know, a little alcohol going if you need it. Um, and that's the best way to probably do it. And speaking of best way, look at the fun and games happening right here. Am I right in the money? Yes, nailed that. That's so good. All right, so I'll show you. So we've got our coconut milk, the thickened part, and we're simply just going to add this in, all right? Off the heat. The reason why we do it off the heat is, as you heard there, the little sizzle. I don't know if they can hear that. Can they hear that? Sizzles? Sizzling. So the reason why we did it off the heat is simply so it doesn't burn the coconut milk because it's got a very... You know, it's got a fragile state when it comes to natural sugars. So you can see here it's thickening up, it's thickening up. And then once it really thins out and everything's combined, we'll put it back on the heat for I'd say about maybe three to four minutes, thicken it up a little bit, add in your pinch of salt and that sauce is done. So you can make this in bulk and you've got yourself a delicious sauce. Do we have any people on, on I can, can we go to the, uh, the Zoom for a second? I want to see if anyone's got their butterscotch sauce they were drip their sauce off. All right, Kamala, you look like you're crushing it. What do you got there? Yeah, look at that sauce. That's awesome. Same with you, Kate. Love your work. Sherry, Sherry looks like she's turning her, are you turning your, your mix into, you are? Awesome. All right, sweet. So you're about to get to get the sauce. Wonderful. All right, so we've got a couple of questions. Laura, fresh or frozen raspberries? Well, Laura, I'm really glad you asked this because in fact, as much as fresh sounds awesome, when you're making a sauce like this, you want to maintain some of its water, which is not typically what you want to do. But while doing that, all you need to do is whack it in the pan and you add water to it and it makes a delicious sauce. It's also cheaper, you can buy more bulk, so I definitely recommend frozen as opposed to fresh. Leave fresh for some other delicious things, so that's a great one. Monica, are, you, are we whisking the butterscotch? Definitely, you can whisk it in, I just couldn't find my whisk. So yeah, go, oh, there it is, you go ahead and whisk it. So. The reason for that is it will make sure you do not separate your fats and your sugars and all the goodies like that. So that's a great question there. Thank you for reminding me. Christy, why, oh, Christy, oh, Christy it is. So why is he doing raspberries? I didn't see that in the recipe. Great question. So I'll give you the, the fun thing. I like to be calling audibles all the time. The actual reason is here I forgot to actually go pick up some micro herbs and I wanted to have some color. And so as a result, I was like, you know, do what I typically do and just think of something that was make it delicious. Uh, and so I was like, can we go get some frozen raspberries? And Ali, about 30 minutes before the show, ran down to Whole Foods, picked up some frozen raspberries. So shout out to Ali. We got some frozen, frozen raspberry sauce. Happy days. So if you wanted to, you can do that sauce. And I'm sure some of you actually hold, I know a lot of friends hold frozen fruit or frozen berries, particularly in their fridge or their freezer, sorry. So go ahead. You can start it right now, it'll take you about 10 minutes. Sweet. All right, so our sauce is pretty much done. I'm just gonna keep them on a low heat for now. I just want it to be a nice little glaze, at which point I'm gonna bring out one that I prepared earlier. Can <laughs> you like that? So yesterday we had a rehearsal, which you guys may have seen on socials. And here it is right here. A delicious, oh, I like that. I should probably clean up my, you know, I might do that just because mum will kill me. Sorry, mum. I'm sorry. I know I made a mess. Give me a second. I'm just going to move this awesome chopping board. I'm going to put this back here because I can do that. Are you going to hate me because I put that right next to your amazing tea towels? Oh, we've, got a, we've got a tea towel game. I'll just fill you in later. So 
Where's our camera angle up top? How's that? Okay, I'm just gonna, oh, you know what? This is a great way to learn how to style too. So I could have like a couple, couple of things going on here. This is like with my team back in the studio in, uh, in New York City, I, like we love, we love looking at ways to, you know, style our set uh, when we're taking photos. So shout out to Marie, shout out to Kieran, MP, if you guys are watching right now, what else we got here? Oh, we got some cinnamon. We do have some cinnamon. But we got, yes, look at this go. So we're about to do the final little piece of resistance. So we've got to make it look pretty. So if I, you know, get some, yeah, look at that. Thank God I'm cleaning later. Everyone's like, okay, nice work, DC. So bang, bang, bang. Oh, I'm not going to do it. That'd, I get in trouble for that one. Cool. So we've got our awesome setup here. So once you've brought this out, what you're looking for is obviously it's turned upside down. Okay. So you're inserting your knife into the thickest part. We probably got, I would say, relatively another 10 to 15 minutes to go, all right? So when you guys are waiting for this to happen, all I'm saying is you insert your knife in the thickest part. If the knife comes out clean, then you're good to go. If it's still a little wet, give it about five minutes. And by a little wet, if you see like, you know, part of it's got a dripping wetness to it, if you pull it out, it's gonna compress. So we don't want that to happen. I know this alarm's gonna go off, so I'm just gonna adjust this quickly because I can. It's a very simple setting, just like that. I'm adjusting everything on the fly. All right, so, you guys ready for this? This is like, I need to make sure my camera, are you guys ready? Because this is like, this is the appeal shot, yeah? Are you sure? All right. Karen, you with me, mate? Are you ready to see the butterscotch sauce in action, dude? Oh, yeah, go for it. All right, so I'm just gonna show you guys, I'm gonna show you guys where mine's at, all right? It is, it's like, you can take it thinner, but I want to kind of, sorry, you can take it thicker. So you can keep it going, but if we just cut to a tighter shot for a second, I'll show you where it's at. So mine's definitely a nice dressing sauce, all right? You can go really thick, but what I want you guys to do is just make sure you're not burning it. And by that, I mean just make sure you have a nice low heat and just be patient, all right? So all I need to do now is essentially pour this over the top, I'm gonna whack on some raspberries, some nuts, and that's my bunch cake, because that's how simple it is. So just to remember, we mixed our wet ingredients with our dry ingredients. We showed you how to whisk, we showed you how to crack an egg one-handed. You baked it, you then made a sauce. We talked to you about raspberry sauce. Everyone's happy, happy holidays. All right, so <laughs> how was that, Karen? Did I summate it pretty well, mate? Is it, is it decent? <laughs> All right, three, oh, get my head out of the way. Three, two, one. Bang, get it into ya. How good. Yes. Oh, heaven. Absolute heaven. And the steam, the gloss and the steam. Are you kidding? Yes. I'm just gonna, you know, there is actually no technique to this. I'm just gonna kind of whack on my berries. All right. Oh, look at that. That's just all frozen raspberries. A bit, of a bit of maple and some water. And then I'm gonna to toss some awesome walnuts over the top. And we're good to go. I'm just putting it out there. This is, I, I grew up thinking about, you know, awesome times around festive season and people in America have definitely welcomed me into their culture, like you all have, and I'm grateful for it. And this is one of the coolest things. I think growing up in Sydney, you know, being a proud Australian and why I'm so close to Breville, because it is an Australian company, originated there. What's so funny? Why are you guys laughing back there? All right. Why are you laughing? It's not even funny. Oh, thank you, dude. I appreciate it. So I'm so proud of being Australian, right? But when I came here, one of the coolest things I got to experience was the festive season in America. And you're all amazing. Like you guys go all out for your families, your friends. It's honestly so cool. So thank you for all of you. And now let me sign off uh, at least making the first part of our dusting experience by saying happy holidays. All right, so here we go. You know, dust, dust, dust. Oh, look at that. You wouldn't even know there was no microherbs. <laughs> dusting, dusting, dusting. Oh, now I'm not gonna lie. Mum would have thought that was dandruff if I was 12, but mum, guess what? That's actually icing sugar. Appreciate it. How about that, team? Isn't that gorgeous? 
I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stand here and admire it for a second. You gotta really appreciate the new things in life. So, at this point, team, we're gonna do one thing first. That is, firstly, take a group photo. I know we've done that already, but I wanna take one with my cake, all right? This is your, you guys giving me my present for the holidays. All right, so I'm gonna hold this up. We're all gonna smile. I'm gonna see you guys all come on screen right now. Oh, warms my heart. Look at you, you're all excited. <laughs> you're all smiling and ready to go. All right, ready, everyone, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Get a little flex for me. Love it. I had to do it. I had to do it. Phil, dude, your background, bro, is so good, man. If you guys don't know Phil, what's that? What am I saying? Oh, Philip. Yeah, come on screen, dude. Turn your camera on. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Put your mic on. Phil, bro, your, uh, your background, dude, is that actually where you are, man? Or are you just in your, your awesome studio kitchen, bro? house right now but um i do live in hawaii though so yeah. i got i had to uh match it up a little bit <laughs> exactly bro keep it on brand dude what's uh what's the so for everyone who doesn't know philip is an awesome you know, chef food creator he's based in hawaii <laughs> so if you ever want to get healthy awesome rec or recipes in general make sure you check out his youtube channel phil what's your uh what's your handle dude what's the best way to keep it's just my on? name philip lemoyne you can come check me out thank you so much for the shout out Always, sorry dude. you probably heard my moped <laughs> i had a question <laughs> for you though yeah well, hit me if you're allergic to, well, I'm allergic to walnuts. Those look like walnuts. I'm wondering what would, and I know that those nuts are going to give it that crunch factor, you know? So what's something that you would probably recommend replacing to still get that, uh, match the flavors, but then also um, get that crunch? Yeah, huge flavor, man. Like, uh, so yeah, it's definitely for the crunch, man. I would say if, are you allergic, if you're allergic to, to walnuts and not pecans, 100% a great way to go. Hopefully almonds are also free. Is that okay? Is, is, are pecans and, and almonds fair game? Oh, I think, I think your audio is gone. But just give me a thumbs up, bro, if that was right. Is that right? Yeah, sick. Thanks for the question, dude. So, yeah, so obviously, like, I think nut allergy, as you said, man, is, is so crucial to be aware of. But if it's just a particular type of nut, texture, as you noted, was what we're going for. So, bro, my bro, um, I'll definitely say almonds and in particular pecans. But, dude... Mahalo, my dude. Uh, looking forward to catching up soon. Ooh, a couple of questions. Denny, how long are you baking the cake in a regular oven for? I would say about 30 minutes, mate, 25 to 30. Um, you know, one, one thing about a regular oven is the air is, you know, you've got a bit more surface area to work with, so the circulation would take a little bit longer for it to get around. This one's a little bit quicker because you'll find yourself, you know, having the air, to be, the heat in the actual oven be very consistent. Um, so yeah, I'd say about 25 to 30 minutes, mate, but just judge yourself on, on that knife thing I was telling you about because every oven's different. You know, make sure the knife is uh, coming out nice and clean. You know, uh, yeah, that's something I've always been taught. Kate, do you need to do the sauce just before serving or keep it up okay? After oh yeah, of course. I think I have, I think one to two jars of this in my fridge at home. So I still use that sauce for other things. So some days I make like pancakes in the morning on a Sunday and I'll have this stored. So you, can, you don't even have to use this for this actual dish. You can use it for something else. But on top of that, um, you know, it, it holds for a while because it's got a good amount of fat in it too. So uh, you're good to go there. Julie, I let my sauce get too much thick. Oh, wait, wait a second. I let my sauce get much thicker yesterday. Will your sauce absorb in the cake? So essentially, I think what you're saying here is the sauce. Oh, you got a new one. I let my sauce get much thicker yesterday. Will your sauce absorb in the cake? So if you... If you did add it to your actual cake, say the day before, the, so like the liquid will still penetrate through. The thinner it is, the more the sponge will absorb it. But if it's thick, it's gonna stay on the outside. If you wanted to have one of those beautiful cut, you know, bunt cakes where you cut the outside in and the sauce drips away and does not fall to the center, you wanna have a thicker one. If you want it so the actual penetration of the sauce gets through to the inside and you wanna have it like a soft cake and then maybe make it more of a glaze later, Definitely get that, you know, thinner one going on for sure. Oh, Sherry, question, my friend. Hey, Sherry. Hello. How you Calling doing? Calling in from San Diego. Oh, Love San Diego. That. Love that place. Yeah. yeah, it's a little cool, but um, for us anyway, 50 <laughs> degrees, you know. But my quick question is, is um, because I have so much left over and I wanted to make this, um, can this be frozen? And if so, do you add 
the sauce beforehand and freeze it? And if so, how do you store it once you freeze it? Yeah, it's a great question. Personally, I've done this frozen once and I've done it where the sauce is this kind of thinness and it actually adds a nice little caramel like um, like a glaze, if you know what I mean. Like a donut, we get that nice glaze on the outside and you can bring it to room temperature and it'll, it'll still have that nice consistency. Um, but personally, I prefer to still have it running. So what I would do is, yes, freeze the cake. You know, you can do this the day before or, you know, if you're doing it for six months time, obviously it'll still last that long. And then what you do is bring them to room temperature, reheat it back up, make the sauce or keep the sauce stored and then pour that when you're serving. Um, alternatively as well, if you're not doing... You know, if you're not there to like actually make a beautiful uh, presentation in front of a bunch of people, if you're making it for your family and they're like, just want a slice of cake, you can just have that sitting in a jar. You can cut up a slice of your cake, you know, heat it up and then just take it out of the jar and just drizzle on top and there you go. It's like doing the same thing with like maple syrup only you've got your own butterscotch. So, um, Is it, it stored in the fridge then? It, you store it in the fridge? Yeah, so I'd store, I'd store the sauce in the fridge and I would store this in the freezer if you're going longer than say, you know, a week. Okay, and one more quick question on that line. With the um, sauce, how long can you leave it in your fridge? How long will it last in the fridge? I would say about nine or 10 days. So if you're going longer than that, I would definitely put it back in the freezer. But when you do that, be sure to portion it out. So like, don't have it in one massive jar. You know, I'll put it into like maybe two smaller jars. So that way you can pull one out, defrost it without having to defrost the whole thing. Um, you can do the same thing for just Tupperware containers or plastic containers or whatever you store uh, your sauces in as well. So just something to think about because it's like, you know, it's got, it's got maple, it's got olive oil and it's got um, the coconut. So they're all natural ingredients. So they, they're going to obviously, the fat's going to look after them for a certain period of time. But then you've got to think about, you know, if it's stayed in the fridge for too long, it will start to ferment in a way. Um, so you make sure to store it in the freezer after that, you know, that eight to nine day period. And I used blood orange olive oil, which really made the sauce smell amazing. Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> All right, yeah. Chef. That's awesome, Chef. Like, where, where, where'd you get that from? Where'd you get the blood orange uh, My husband gets it every year. We have a local company called Olive and Company, and basically the local company makes olive oil. That's and so awesome. every year he gets a gift pack. So I use that for That's this because awesome. yeah. it seemed like a good way to use it. It's very smart, mate. Absolutely. Because then you get, you get that citrus, you get the sourness, and it balances really well. And again, like you just showed where you don't need to follow a recipe uh, you got the principles with, you know, the wet versus the dry, you know, you've got a sauce that you like and, and by doing so you can kind of then take it from any which way to create your own flavor. So um, I'm completely envious that I do not have blood orange uh, Evo with me right now. So I'll, I'll, I'll put the company in the chat. You can see who has it. That, and I did awesome. use pears and they smell amazing too. Oh, that's great. That's awesome to know. Love that. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing, can you take a photo of yours? I'd love to see what yours looks I like. Will. Well. I will. It'll be on my, um, I, Instagram everything, so it'll be on what's my Instagram. Your, what's your Instagram? <laughs> Don't laugh. Baseball mom sex. That is awesome. I am just in awe. That is the best. Oh. <laughs> yes. It's, Love it. It's for both my kids when yeah, they were course. young. Of course. <laughs> well, it's after them. They <laughs> Well, you're making me happy hearing about it. So, well, thank you for being part tonight as well. So, happy holidays to you, mate, and I'll definitely check out Instagram. We've got another Thank you, and it's also the first time I ever used a one-handed crack egg. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That stuff gets me so pumped. <laughs> Love your work, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Question from Angie. Angie, you coming in. Where are you coming in from, mate? Hi, coming in from Pasadena, California. Oh, what's going on? So my question is, of course, I didn't have um, a bunt pan available mm -hmm. at the moment. So I just like these little loaf pans. Awesome. And I noticed that my kind of like leaked bubbly oil all around the outside mm -hmm. and the center cracked. Would that have been like one of those moments where you do like a pound cake where you put like a, a stripe of butter down the center to control the crack? I mean, you could definitely do that. I mean, a lot of it's to do with you know, releasing the air out of the sensor. You also could have just, you know, whisked a lot of air in the base of it in general. Uh, but, you know, to be honest, like when we pulled this one out yesterday, they still had a slight little raise in the top. And in, in the, like what we do sometimes in the chef world is sometimes those things are, if you don't, if you bang it out, cool. But sometimes you still have those uncontrollable experiences. And we actually have to sometimes actually cut just to make sure they fit on the cake tin. So I wouldn't think it's like, it's one of those things where sometimes, Food has its own way of doing stuff, but definitely bang it out a little bit better. If you do use the butter, it's going to definitely create 
um, a layer on top, particularly if it's melt, it starts to melt. Because you gotta remember when you're doing um, anything from like puff pastry, when you keep it cold, it creates like a layer of pocket, which is what raises like croissants and those beautiful things. So um, if it is melting, yes, you can definitely get away with creating that seal, which will prevent it. But I'll just say number one is, you know, making sure you, you, you're, you're tapping out really well. Like I even can take a quick look inside here and it's not like huge crack, but there's definitely like one on one side here. So a lot to do with like making sure that if you really wanted to, getting all the bubbles out in the center when you're whisking together, if you really want to be thinking about it, then tapping out your tin. But uh, mate, I love the fact you've got your own your own cake tin there. Let's have a look. So have you got, have you pulled it out? Has it, has it got? Yeah. That's awesome. It's already um, thick, everything. Um, it's still kind of warm though. I'm wondering if I pour the sauce and kind of like squish it, would it, it might fuse together? I don't know. Yeah, definitely. So if you pulled if you pulled it out right now, and if you are, ha are able to handle it, I personally let cooling it for you know another five minutes because you don't want to all the steam to escape and it dry out. But if you do get moisture, it's it's actually like counterintuitive. If you go too far, you don't take advantage of the holes that the steam's created. So if you um, effectively allow it to cool, no matter what, you're going to have some steam. And if you pour the sauce on, it will allow for the actual sauce to get through, uh, you know, into the sponginess. So I would just make sure you don't do it too early where it's going to be like super drying out, but still do it where there is still a little bit of steam coming, where when you sauce it out, it's going to be tasty. Oh, mine looks like it's got awesome. for another five minutes. How was that, mate? Did that, um, did that make sense, though? Was that all good? Does that make sense? Awesome. So I'm looking forward to seeing you pour your sauce over yours right now because it looks like it's ready to go. You pulled the knife out. Um, epic. Well, mate, best of luck in, in uh, Pasadena, California. I look forward to getting out there. Chris, could I use almond flour instead of AP flour? Absolutely. The things about almond flour and also coconut flour is they're very thirsty. You'll notice when you add liquid to them, what will happen is they will definitely soak up that liquid and it may even be a bit of delay. What I mean by that is you actually, you know, effectively put all your liquid in and you like mix it together. And it's like, oh, it's the perfect thing that Dan showed me. You walk away for 30 seconds and come back and it's very, very dry. So you just want to make sure you have a little bit extra milk ready for you because it does soak it up. Remember, it's not made out of, you know, typical uh, grains made out of almonds, which is a different format altogether. But I love working with almond flour. Uh, it's nutty. Uh, obviously, it's great for those people who are gluten free as well. Oh, wow, it is that time. And I'm really glad <laughs> it's just so exciting for this because this is the moment a lot of you've been waiting for. All right, we are about to announce the winner of our awesome Dual Breville Smart Oven. So, as I said, there's only one of us who can do this, only one of us who can get this easy, quick preheat with the three options for firstly choosing your different presets can be dehydrate, air fry, bake, roast convection. You got your temperature control, your time, the easy tray pull out for when you're cleaning as well. So you don't have those smoke alarms going off in between all your fun and games. But without saying anything further, we're about to announce this person. So you can pick up one of these for Christmas. I will say that if you are unfortunately not the lucky winner, but it can only be one of us. Should I announce them right now, team? Are we okay with this? All right. So, I reckon they're better to come on, stay on, the, on the screen as well, right? That's true. Is this going to happen? This is exciting. This is like, for, like doing, doing a live cooking class, guys, is awesome. You've got cameras everywhere. All right. Drum roll, please. Congratulations, Kahaji. Kahaja? Kahaja? How do I pronounce that right? Kahaja? Hi, how are you doing? You won. What's, sorry, and please correct me. How do I pronounce it? Oh, sorry, can we get her audio on? Is that possible? Is your, is your audio on? I can't hear her, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, is your, is your mic? You want to tell you, if you, is your mic muted right now, mate? You want, to, you want to unmute your mic? Oh, well, look at that beautiful stovetop. If you're doing one of those kitchen series where I come in and uh, check out your kitchen, I still can't hear you though, unless you're silent. Can you? No, I still can't hear you. Oh no. <laughs> is your have you got? Is your zoom button got the mute button on?
I'm really good at sign language though, I must admit. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, we're very excited for you here and we're looking forward to getting you an oven. Uh, but thank you so much for being a part of it as well. Sorry we couldn't hear you, but thanks for coming along and cooking. I can see, is that your sauce in the background? Is that your sauce? Is that the sauce in the background? It is? That's awesome. That's great. Let's have a look. Yeah, show us what you got. Just pull it up for me. Oh, look at it go. That's awesome. Yeah, that's epic. And now it's great because you can do, you can repeat this recipe and you can actually just use this oven to do it now. So, but thank you for being a part of today and thank you for being part of the whole Breville family. No, thank you. Merry Christmas and happy, happy holidays to all of you. Um, and so without saying further, guys, well, we have a question. What about something like cassava or tiger nut? Have you ever cooked with those? Oh my Lord, tiger nut is awesome. All right, it's like a whole new age, but similar to like almond flour and coconut flour, it is also very thirsty. So you've got to add a little extra liquid. Andrew, would you ever consider putting Vegemite on it? <laughs> I actually would. Uh, if that's peanut, that's my little brother. Love your work, mate. If it's not Andrew from uh, probably Australia or something, mate, I, um, I would actually put in the butterscotch sauce. So salty and sweet, and it's full of umami. Counterintuitive, but it would be delicious. So. Anyway, um, it has been a pleasure. Do we have any other questions, team? No, we're all good. So I just want to say, you know, first and foremost, thank you to all of you for joining us tonight. Massive thank you to Crate and Barrel Kitchen and, of course, Breville. You know, you guys have been amazing having us here. Uh, and, of course, you guys don't see them all, but there's an incredible production company around us. We've been doing this every single month. So if you don't join up, you know, doing them every single time. You should make sure you keep up to date with Breville Socials because these guys do an incredible work every single month putting these live shows on. And so without saying further, team, follow us on socials. Make sure if you did do some cooking tonight to tag us tonight, obviously all the ones you see on our screen today. And if you have any further questions that we didn't get to, make sure you hit me up on DMs. I'm Chef Dan Churchill. And as always, team, we'll hit you eat like a legend. See you soon, team. Bye.